All right. Good afternoon. Um, thank you to everyone um, who has joined us. Um, at this time, we will initiate the public meeting for the Equitable Policing Advisory Group. Um, today's agenda is available online. Um, I'll first uh, provide uh, a report out on the efforts that we've done um, since our last meeting. And um, we will uh, allow the advisory group members who are with us today to share some remarks and if there are any members from the public who um, have joined, um, we will allow them to ask questions. All right, uh, so good afternoon and welcome again to the Equitable Police and Advisory Group meeting. I'm Savitra Peoples Brown and I serve humbly as the chair of the Baltimore County Equitable Police and Advisory Group. Um, I would like to remind everyone that today's meeting is being recorded. Since our last update in January, the county has achieved several milestones. We are pleased to share with you today the various advances. But first, to recap, as previously reported, we spent the greater part of 2023 completing a deeper dive analysis of traffic stop data. This was done so in response to the county's analysis of 2018 traffic enforcement data that concluded that black motorists were issued traffic citations at a higher rate than others. The deeper dive analysis study allowed us to better understand racial disparities in traffic stops. And as a result of the study, we found that the greatest disparity for black and Hispanic drivers occur post traffic stop. The full report of the deeper dive analysis is accessible on the county's equitable policing webpage. Now that the county has clarity on the specifics behind traffic enforcement disparity, we also have clarity on the areas to focus mitigation. To facilitate next steps, the county entered into a new agreement with doctors Lauren Hamilton Edwards and Usman Ali who are subject matter experts in the field and who performed the initial deeper dive analysis to complete the following. First, they're working with us to conduct a review of 2023 data. The initial work they performed included a review of 2017 through 2022 traffic enforcement data. They're also working with us to facilitate workshops with members of the Equitable Policing Advisory Group. The workshops are focused on community engagement, traffic stop, and internal management. They're also working with us to conduct an in-depth engagement of the police department. This includes observations and interviews with officers regarding standard operating procedures, policies, and practices. And last, they are assisting us with the advisory group policy development at both the local and state level. Please note that while these things are in progress, we are in the very early stage of completion, and therefore the findings will be available at a much later time. I do also want to mention that there have been some changes in the advisory group members. The former chair of the Police Accountability Board Ms. Linda Shields is succeeded by Bishop Ralph Dennis. Police Major Orlando Lilly has been succeeded by Major Daniel Kalsak Jr. Also from the police department, we have Colonel Dennis Delt and Colonel John McMahon as members. We also have a youth member, Damon Hawker, from the Community College of Baltimore County. Thank you to our current and past members who have served. There has been great progress made to date, and we are excited about the great work that is in progress as well as what lies ahead. Now I will turn it over to our advisory group members to share some remarks. Police Chief McCullough, would you like to share some remarks?
I think he may have stepped away. Up oh, there he is. You're on mute, um, Chief. As your police chief, my foremost duty is to ensure that every community member is treated uh, with the utmost dignity and respect and receives equitable treatment in every encounter with all members of the police department. The women and men of the Baltimore County Police Department readily accept and embrace the input and oversight that comes with serving our community. The department is proud of our efforts in recent years to add extensive training initiatives to help mitigate and push it biases and enhance the escalation techniques. For example, we have implemented several ongoing trainings, including fair and impartial policing, implicit bias, active bystander for law enforcement, able training, uh, ICAT, which is integrating communications and assessment and tactics, which is a de-escalation training, and Blue Parrots, which embodies a mindfulness and training. The findings included um, so far underscore the importance of our, of our efforts, the need for continued review of policies and procedures and ongoing commitment to transparency in the work that we are doing as a work group. We understand the significance of engaging in open dialogue with community and residents. Diverse pers perspectives and insights are crucial as we work collaboratively to enact meaningful and stronger partnerships with the community and move forward. I want to thank County Executive Johnny Oshesky and his administration for their leadership in developing and supporting the Baltimore County Advisory uh, Work Group and the Work Group uh, on Equitable Policing and to inform what equitable police practices across Baltimore County. I want to thank the men and women of the Baltimore County Police Department and the members of this work group for all the work that has been done up to this this point, and I look forward to. Uh, the work that we will do to ensure equity um, as it relates to the, the treatment of our citizens in Baltimore County as we move forward. Thank you. Savitra looks frozen. I don't know if her system is working. Ramona, can you text her? I was getting ready to jab her now. <laughs> Okay, I think I'm finally unmuted. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, technology isn't always what it cracks up to be. Um, thank you, Chief, for those remarks. Um, do we have uh, any other advisory group members who would like to share? Um, I know Dr. Tolson is um, also attending another meeting but I don't know if she's able to come off mute. Um, yes, um, I've definitely enjoyed working with the group. Um, I look forward to continually working with the individuals on the group to um, better the community and policing. Um, definitely to continue um, meeting with um, the chief um, and working with his department and any other um, community members that um, would like to join in 
um, because the goal is to continue to make improvements. Um, so, I, again, um, anybody that wants to want me to assist with anything, I'm open. You know, just let me know. Um, I'm looking forward to um, additional results because um, I'm sure the results will be ever evolving. So. Thank you. I won't say too much more because I am at the NAACP um, National Conference. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tolson. Um, unfortunately, my screen um, is not showing who else who may have joined. Are there any other advisory group members um, who would like to share remarks? Ms. Francis is, oh, this is on. Ms. Francis is on. Yes, hi, um, this is Crystal Francis. Just want to echo the same sentiments. Um, the one thing that I can say is that it's it's really good and reassuring when we are able to work with an administration that cares about this issue. Um, and, you know, being the community representative, uh, you know, for, for the group and being able to engage and see the data um, is something that's extremely important. I think will give us everything that we need to make sure we see tangible results. So it's been a pleasure um, working and just want to let the community know that the administration cares, the police department cares, we have a chief that cares about this topic and resources are being invested to make sure that the policing is equitable and that we can build strong police community relationships throughout the county. Thank you, Dr. Francis. I don't see any other um, members with us at this time. Um, I know that uh, one of the members said that they will be joining a little later. Um, I'm trying to see if we have any comments, any hands raised. Okay. Okay, not seeing any. Um, Major Kalsak, did you have any remarks that you would like to share? I um, just want to, you know, thanks um, for being a part of this uh, this uh, group. Um, that uh, as a police department, as the chief, I like we were the chief. You know, within our training, um, you know, we continue to to enhance and uh, you know include um, the aspects he mentioned throughout our training programs, whether it be entrance level, in service training. Um, you know, we we continually, you know, work hard to uh, to to meet the um, requirements as well as go well above, you know, those requirements. So, but I appreciate being here. All right, and did um, any other member um, with the police department wish to share any remarks? All right, um, hearing none, um, I do want to remind everyone that our next meeting um, will be in October. We do convene on a quarterly basis. Um, we did not convene in the second quarter, but we um, will make that up so that we have a total of four um, meetings in the calendar year uh, so that additional meeting date will be uh, determined and announced via the public website. All right, seeing no additional comments or chat, I will adjourn today's meeting. Thank you, Ms. Thank Peoples. You. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have Thank a good you. Day. You too.
Thank you. Mm-hmm.